There he is, the boss dog. You know why I call him the boss dog? Because he's the boss. <laughs> watching the world burn, watching the world burn. August 14th, 2024. Let's get into it. Uh, the first thing, since I do call myself that cybersecurity guy, your government and corporations, I keep telling you, they don't know shit about cybersecurity. <laughs> I mean, oh my God. I don't know if you followed it, but the government database just got hacked. Everybody social, unless, they, I mean, it hasn't been community verified on X yet. But right now, the report is that the government got hacked and everybody's social security information is now available to the entire world on the internet. And if you heard me talk in the past, I've always told you, it doesn't matter if you give out your social security number, everybody's got it anyway, even before this government got hacked. So when they're sitting there going, we need your social security number and it's a, it's a bank that you're talking to, now make sure you know who you're talking to, okay? Don't, don't just be giving it out to anybody. You know, that calls up some, some hacker or whatever. I mean, be careful about that, but it just doesn't matter at this point. So I just wanted to get that off my chest. They don't know shit about cybersecurity. All right, so the next story I wanted to get into was, uh, it was Alpha Fox. And this is kind of, it's funny as hell. And uh, I maybe, I, I don't know, I, 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 it's kind of in bad taste, <laughs> but, but it, it depends on your sense of humor, man. But he posted this, uh, this uh, video and it was this hugely fat woman. And, uh, and, the, and his comment was, he says, I wonder if she would survive longer in the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> I don't know why I found that so funny, man. And then Trump, uh, or um, Elon Musk parody, if you follow that channel, uh, they put out an uh, AI-generated video of Trump and Elon dancing together, which was funny as hell. So that was pretty cool. And I enjoyed that. But let's get into the, the story of the day because I was watching, I wish I could take credit for this. I was watching Alistair McLeod and uh, he was talking about the war in the Middle East and how it's inevitable and what the actual goal is there. Because, you know, one of the things that, uh, if you listen to Lindsey, that lunatic Lindsey Graham, God, please, South Carolina, will you vote that guy out? But anyway, uh, the reason why for the war in Ukraine was we wanted to vulcanize the uh, Russian resources. And so what Alistair was pointing out was our entire uh, financial system is a debt-based system. Sorry, we got cut off there. <laughs> but anyway, it's a debt-based system. And right now, it's not based on anything. If you remember, recall, we were taken off the gold standard back in 73 by Nixon. And uh, so since then, what we've done is we've plundered, like right now we're plundering the oil in Syria. And that's kind of what keeps the system going. And, uh, but you know, uh, we're kind of running out. We've been chased out of Africa at this point with our colonial ventures there. And then, of course, we, um, we're, we, we, it looks like we're going to get chased out of Ukraine. Uh, because if that happens, we, of course, we, we're already planning to vulcanize the resources in Ukraine. If you listen to Lindsey Graham, he says, well, you know, we can go in there. That's worth like six or $20 trillion. They had, you know, because they got, they got natural gas. They have plenty of farmland and everything. But uh, I don't know if you watched my last video. Russia's done, man. There will be no uh, um, ceasefire or a, uh, uh, what do they call it, you know, in North Korea where, you know, it, the guys are on both sides. Uh, you know, no, Russia's only going for unconditional surrender of Ukraine. So that means we can't really vulcanize those uh, resources in Ukraine. So what's left? Well, you got, uh, we wanted to take China out because uh, they consider them a geopolitical threat. Why, I don't know. Uh, the chip um, sanctions didn't work on China. So what's left is the thing is to take Iran out. Now, is Iran going to launch? Now, was I incorrect? I told you that it, I thought they would launch on the 12th because of the uh, significance of that day, because there's been other events that have happened on that day. But it didn't happen. All right, so I guess I was... What, what is the fines? I was... I was wrong, okay? I, I admit it. So, but it's still, it's still going to happen. There's no way, no how that there's going to be peace in the Middle East. And then Israel is going to launch a nuke on Iran. Because once Iran hits them, I, I know it's in the cards. I'm going to tell you that right now. We're going nuclear with this thing, baby. And, uh, but the, the, the reason for that is, is they don't want that oil flowing to China. Right now, Iran and Russia, of course, are the, the two biggest suppliers of oil to China. China doesn't have 
I, I, the oil fields. I mean, they've got every, they're rich in all other natural resources, especially like gold and uh, all of the, the lithium uh, batteries and all of the metals, you know, and everything. But they just don't have the oil, and the economy is just going to get destroyed when they can't get the oil. So the goal here is to uh, basically F Iran up so badly that they can't ship that oil to China. That's the end game, or as Alistair put. I mean, that's that was his take on it, I, I, and I agree with him. And that's why I'm making this video, because if you do get to watch this, that's where I think we're heading. So Iran, and by the way, the coordinating with, um, obviously, Hezbollah, uh, the Hamas, and then, of course, they'll be coordinating with uh, Yemen. And I, and I have a feeling I think Syria is going to get involved. That base in uh, Syria that the United States has, it's going to disappear. The Iraqi base is going to disappear. So we're going to have a lot of dead Americans, which is basically going to, you know, the, the government's going to use that to get the American people all fired up. To, let's go to war! The warmonger and Democrats, let's go to war! The warmonger and Democrats, let's go to war! So yeah, so the, I imagine we're going to be heavily involved there. And then, when, well, I, by the way, I don't think those bases are going to get taken out until we bomb Iran. But I think that's in the cards. No way the United States doesn't bomb Iran at this point. I mean, we got too many senators. We got lunatics like Lindsey Graham and Tom Cotton, and all of them are chomping at the bit. They want they want a big war in the Middle East. They want a regional war. So that's where that's where the whole damn thing's heading. And when he when he made the, the reason that, that we want to fight, because think about Iran. What are they doing to hurt us? I mean, think about it. What are they doing to hurt the United States? Okay, well maybe they uh, they're they're arming their proxies. But we've got, I mean, who's the culprit here? Why have we got bases in, in Iraq? Why have we got bases? Well, we, we know we're in Syria to steal the oil, you know. And like I said in my example in the previous video, imagine if you had a Chinese base just down the street and they're pumping oil out of the ground from the United States and sending it back to China. That's exactly what we're doing to the Middle East. Oh, my God. And then the bases in Iraq. Why are we still in Iraq? They don't want us there. You understand how the, the empire, the U.S. empire, is hated around the world? And then we're supporting a genocide in, in, in Israel. By the way, they, they, they dropped a, heard another report. They dropped another huge uh, number of 2,000 pound bombs on Gaza. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Western countries are disingenuous in their handling of the Palestinian situation. Everywhere they talk about democracy. Democracy should be strengthened. But in reality, they are authoritarian. They discuss upholding human rights. However, in reality, the U.S. has facilitated the large-scale destruction of Palestinians. As of now, about 40,000 people have been killed, not to mention the wounded and the widespread devastation. It has not been demonstrated that the U.S. presence had any effect on easing the tensions or stopping the destruction. Right now, Israel is on the rampage. Is Israel listening to America? No, it is not. How can we trust the U.S. to resolve the Palestine issue? It has vetoed so many resolutions. In many cases, it vetoes them to give an advantage to Israel. Palestine has been victimized to this day. There is very strong evidence that Israel wants to completely destroy Palestine and will build a new state under Israeli rule to wipe Palestine off the map. So I don't know how many people they killed this time. I haven't seen the videos. There was one horrible video of a, a young kid, probably maybe two years old, and just, just all, all messed up. Uh, you know, these people post this stuff, and I, I would never show you that, but it was just, I mean, my heart broke, man. That's what we're doing to the people in, of Palestine. And uh, it, it seems like the Christians in the United States are all for it. I don't get it, man. Do you realize how hated the United States has become? And that, that was the other thing I keep pointing out, is when we bomb Moran, which we're going to, I, I don't know if we're going to nuke them. I know Israel's going to nuke them for sure. All right. When that happens, there's terror cells in the United States. You're not safe here. This war is coming to our shores. It's no longer, you know, where we just sit there and we sit back on our TVs and pop popcorn and watch the fireworks in Iraq like back in 2003, you know, when they were just showing all the bombs going off on Baghdad when we were killing a million people over in Iraq. You're not going to sit this one out. You're not going to sit this one out. The other story, let's, let's move on from uh, the depressing news of the Middle East. Uh, I just get fired up when I think about it and when Alistair said that. So, you know, anyway, what the whole point is, is if we can't vulcanize the resources in Ukraine and the dollar is based on this pyramid where it goes up, you know, usually you have something at the base like uh, gold. 
And then on top of the gold, you got bonds. And then on top of the, the bonds, you got derivatives, okay? And he was pointing out, I mean, we're in the quadrillion range of derivatives. And all that is is this massive pyramid scheme. And that whole damn thing is going to come crashing down because the dollar's based on nothing at this point. We, we can't even vulcanize the resources in Ukraine. All right, let's, let's get on to something fun. <laughs> There's a tweet going, I mean, an X post. God, I, keep, I always want to say tweet. I, I apologize, Elon. I'm sorry if you ever watch these videos. By the way, Elon Musk parody. I don't know if that's Elon or who, somebody that works for him. Uh, they are following me now, so I, I got to be careful what I say. don't want to piss off the, the big guy. But uh, anyway, there was, um, uh, it was a, 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 a video of uh, CNN, and I guess they were interviewing uh, one of the anchors. And, and she goes, she says, well, you know, CNN, you know, we're, we're one of the most truthful networks around and we report nothing but the facts. Well, it's a literal audience, right? I mean, who's going to be there? And everybody started laughing. <laughs> you know, it was like, I know I would have been laughing. I would have been. What are you talking about? You're the most distrusted name in news, man. All you are is a propaganda arm of the Democrat Party. But that was the whole point. I mean, when the crowd started laughing, so they're, they're posting that all over X right now. I don't know if it's trending. It's probably in the top 10 posts on X. And uh, so I thought that was pretty cute and hilarious. All right, man. We'll wait to the, the next story. If we can get him on the video. Check him out. Well, he got away from me. So next topic I want to talk about was Ukraine for just a minute. So, uh... There, it, there was a lot of speculation that uh, Russia left that area open so that NATO would attack uh, the Kirsch region there and uh, and that Putin was in on it and let it happen. I don't know. I mean, I, Putin's a ruthless son of a gun. I don't think he would allow his civilians to get killed in the number numbers that the Ukrainians killed them unless you just think he's the most evil person on the planet, which... I mean, it's possible. <laughs> I mean, but I, I, I don't think so. I, I don't think that the, the Russians saw that one coming. I mean, maybe they saw it coming. They just didn't have the, the, uh, the uh, forces in place. Kiev planned to seize the nuclear power plant in the Kursk region and then use it as a bargaining chip against Moscow and any potential peace negotiations. The full plot was revealed by the commander of Russia's Ahmad Special Forces. Obviously, Ukrainian forces have not achieved their goal. They wanted to take control of the Kursk nuclear power plant by August 11th. Today is August 14th. Zelensky's Blitzkrieg, which planned to seize the nuclear power plant and then enter the negotiations with an ultimatum, has not succeeded. Kiev deployed over 11,000 soldiers. Most of Ukraine's military equipment that they used in the Kursk region has been destroyed. They have spent all the resources they had. Major General Abdiel Odin of the commander of the Ahmad Special Forces, who I know personally, he has a reputation of pretty much never staying away from, from the front line. So he doesn't just rely on intelligence reports, which he, of course, does get, but he can see what is going on with his very own eyes as it happens from the for mostly most of the time from the forwardmost command point. So according to him, apparently the initial plan and the initial goal of the Ukrainian armed forces here in the Kursk region was to rush the Kursk nuclear power plant, get control over it, and then present Russia with an ultimatum. That, of course, would be a tit-for-tat move in the eyes of Kiev because Russia right now is still, it has been for years now, in control of the Zaporozhye nuclear power plant. So getting control of something of similar caliber would, of course, would have seen Kiev enjoy some very very well significant leverage here on when it comes to any negotiations with Moscow. That plan has failed. The Ukrainian armed forces are right now dozens of kilometers away from uh, the Kursk nuclear power plant. They have not been able to even start to get close to the facility and uh, right now it is operating uh, as usual and in turn the fighting continues again dozens and dozens of kilometers away from the facility again according to Major General Alaudinov uh, the Ukrainian armed forces are not in the full control of the town of Suja most of the resources most of the manpower and uh, equipment that they have so far used here in the Kursk region has been destroyed the fighting continues all across the front line the 
uh, Ukrainian armed forces. They have been trying to breach the border with the Belgorod region as well, but there, their attempts have failed uh, in their tracks. They have reserves on the Ukrainian territory in the Sumy region, which they can deploy here or elsewhere. And uh, at the same time, the Russian troops, they keep advancing in the Donbass outside of the town of Donetsk. Uh, that was another hope of the Kiev regime that maybe this border incursion in the Kursk region would see <laughs> Russia uh, thinning their lines and just uh, thinning their uh, garrisons uh, on other parts of the front so that those sections would be stabilized by the Ukrainian militants. So that so far hasn't happened. The Russian forces continue their advance, uh, their advance outside of Donetsk and uh, in general all across the front line where they were advancing before this border incursion. But anyway, I'm seeing videos now of Ukrainians uh, retreating from the Kirsch uh, and of course the Russians. They're, like I said, they're calling it a terrorist. Uh, um, that, that was an act of terrorism, so it's no longer a special military operation. So the gloves are off. So they're just exterminating the Ukrainians as they try to retreat. So all of those uh, guys, they're all going to die. I don't think the Russians are taking prisoners at this point. Uh, at least in the past, they used to take prisoners and treat them pretty well. So uh, the other thing, and I'm not, I haven't verified this, and some people say yes and some people say no, but there were reports that the Russians heard uh, English, Romanian, French, and uh, what was the other one? I'm Polish. So they're saying, well, Russia's, well, the reports are that the, there were Poles, uh, uh, NATO troops from the United States, from Poland, from Romania, and uh, France that participated in that whole assault in the Kirsch. And I, I, I can believe that. I mean, what do you think? I mean, I, but I tell you what, what, what U.S. soldier, I mean, if you, if you told me when I was in the Marine Corps, for example, that I got to go fight for Ukraine in a hopeless battle, on a hopeless battlefield, I, you know, I would have just taken the, uh, the, the dishonorable discharge. I would have said, hell no. I mean, I, I, at least with the dishonorable discharge, you're going to live. I mean, that was a suicide mission from the beginning. You knew that the Russians, and I didn't know that they would label it a terrorist uh, act and, and just exterminate everybody. So that blew my mind. The, um, the other report that I was listening to on the radio, and there's a lot of... Um, Organizations coming out now that are promoting gender affirming care. Gender affirming care, and they're saying it's a good thing that this is, uh, it's psychologically important to the kids to disfigure their bodies for the rest of their lives. You know, the girls can't have children from that point on. What do you think? Leave a comment below. To me, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. I mean, what, you know, I don't even care if I wanted it. If I was a kid, well, number one, my dad would have smacked the shit out of me if I told him, Dad, I'm a girl. You ain't no damn girl. Smack. <laughs> that would have been it, you know. Or get the hell out of my house. You freaking, you know, I, what did I raise? I raised that lunatic. Oh, my God. I mean, back in the day, huh? I guess parents ain't like that no more. Oh, yes, Johnny. You are a girl. I think you should cut off your penis and then and, and go around and then and, and maybe we can give you a fake vagina oh my god johnny that's exactly what you need in life I mean, what, what parent would do that to the kid i mean am, am i just wrong here am i just out on the limb i can't vote for a party that is for all kind of sexual perversions i can't do it I can't vote for a party that's going to accept transgenders going into women's restroom. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't go with a party that wants to cut little girls' breasts off to make them boys. I can't go with a party that says you can be a boy today and a girl tomorrow. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't support a party that wants to remove God from its party platform. You in trouble when the nation forgets God. 
I can't follow a party that wants to sexualize our children in school, put drag queens in front of them, reading them little children's stories. I can't do it. I can't support a party that wants to take the rights of parents away. In California right now, parents are being arrested because they won't go alone with the sexualization of their children. But there are many parents that are compromised. Y'all got to make a decision. It's either God or the devil. I, you know, oh my God. That's just, and it's the sick, it's a sick thought. The, uh, the next story was, and it's all over X right now. I don't even know why it's all over X. Was the WHO came out and said there's been a monkeypox breakout in Africa. And uh, they were going on and on about how, you know, they're going to declare another pandemic. Or everybody thinks they are. But my, my point was, who listens to the who? <laughs> I mean, you know, think about it. Trump took us out of the World Health Organization. But are you going to listen to the who at this point? Are you going to listen to the CDC? Are you going to put on a mask? Are you going to socially distance? Are you going to wash your hands every 10 minutes? Are you going to go through that shit again? Well, I guess the Democrats will. They'll believe it. They'll believe anything the government tells them. I, mean, I don't care if I do die of monkeypox. I'm, I'm going to live my life, man. And, you know, more than likely, I'll probably get it if it does become a pandemic. And then, it, then you get, well, if you survive it, you'll have natural immunity. Which, uh, what is that uh, company? The Wellness Company? Anyway, they've got this kit now where you can get ivermectin, hydroxychloroquine, and some other uh, things. I, obviously, it's not, this isn't a paid advertisement. I don't get paid anything. I was just, I've just been thinking about getting one of those kits for the next, uh, the next uh, WHO uh, lunacy, or the CDC lunacy. You know, who knows where all that's going to go. So, uh, there's that. Uh, just, hang on, it was, oh, there was one other thing. All right, he's doing great today. I'll tell you what, normally he wants to stop and pee on every tree, <laughs> but, but he's actually moving along pretty good. I don't know what's going on. So the, uh, the, yeah, the other story about uh, health related, and this blew my mind, there's actually a place in New York, New York now, the bluest of blue states, that they just passed a law in a local town that it's illegal to wear masks. New York of all places. I wanted to get uh, on to the election for just a minute, too, and I've been beating a dead horse. But right now we've got Louisiana and Virginia that have decided that they're going to clean up their voter rolls and get the illegal aliens off. Well, we need to do that here in Florida also, and in all the, the red states. The Democrats are not going to do it because they want to cheat. They're going to vote all their illegal aliens, and those, that's why those states was probably, even if, even if the, the majority of the citizens voted Republican the, the, with the illegal aliens on the voter rolls, they'll still remain Democrat because they wanted to change the demographics. And that'll work for the, uh, for the Democratic states and, and probably a few swing states. But, uh, but at least in the Republican states, we can clean up the doggone voter rolls. But I wanted to tell you that, uh, that mass story because that one, that one blew my mind. So another story about why war in the Middle East is inevitable. There's some batshit crazy rabbi over there. Now, I don't know if you knew, um, there's this religious mosque, I guess, uh, or temple that the Muslims uh, revere, very uh, kind of like, you know, when they go to Saudi Arabia for their pilgrimage, uh, it's like the holiest of holy sites, kind of like the Wailing Wall. I mean, imagine if, uh, you know, a bunch of Muslims took a pickaxe to the Wailing Wall there in Israel, uh, how the Christians might rise up and uh, think that was a bad idea. But anyway, all these Zionists, were laying down in front of this uh, mosque, uh, preventing any Muslims from going in there and worshiping. And he was going on and on about how they're going to destroy this place and get rid of it. If you don't think that's going to infuriate a bunch of Muslims and Arabs, uh, I, I think you got another thing coming. That was a big story. The other one, I want to get back to Alistair Crook uh, for, for what he was talking about. I mean, this is actually kind of depressing, but I hate to say it, I, I do agree with him. He said, you know, it's just not going to make any difference of who gets elected because the deep state he says the president at this point is just a figurehead 
Now, when you think about it, that's very true of Biden. You know, we know that he's not in charge. So if Trump gets in there, and he, said, and he was pointing out everything that took place of what they did to Trump. So you, you, you figure the first thing that happened was we had the uh, Russia, Russia, Russia hoax, which uh, Devin Nunes proved was wrong. They took Trump out in the first two year or two of his uh, administration. Then we had the, uh, the Ukraine uh, phone call where they impeached him, and they, that put him on the sidelines. And then Trump wanted to get out of Syria, and they blocked him there, even though uh, he, he told them, you know, get all our troops out of Syria, and they just ignored him. So what Alistair was pointing out was it doesn't matter who gets elected. It's the deep state that's running the country right now. And that there's no way that, that, that your, your figurehead or whoever you elect, Kamala or uh, Trump, uh, is going to get in there. The other thing I don't know if you knew, uh, New York has blocked uh, Robert F. Kennedy from being on the ballot. Uh, and, you know, and only, by the way, only Democrat states are blocking him from being on the ballot. And, you know, there's speculation he's going to take a lot more votes from Trump than he is from Kamala. But that's how that's how vicious the Democrats are. I mean, they don't even they don't even want any sort of competition, even if even if it works to their benefit. I mean, they just I, I don't get it, man. I don't get it at all. But I wanted to talk about that Zionist. Uh, you know, if they really tear down the uh, this mosque in in Israel, that's going to be unbelievable. And also, the yeah, Alistair Crook's assessment is that you know the, this president at this point is just a figurehead. And that the deep state runs the United States. And no matter what Trump tries to do, he said he'll just be blocked the whole every step of the way. Now, Trump does have the uh, court of public opinion on his side. So obviously, I think that he'd be, if, he's, if anything can be done at all, I think Trump has a better shot at it than Kamala. Because she doesn't have uh, public opinion on her side. She's just a, a tool of the, uh, the mainstream media propaganda machine. So just uh, wanted to throw those those, those two stories out. Uh, the other portion of the uh, story on Kursk, I completely forgot about it. I'm sorry, I don't have a, my brain, you know, I don't have photographic memory, but uh, the Russians were also accusing the Ukrainians of using chemical weapons. Hence, terrorist, uh, the terrorist designation, and that's why they're all going to die. Another reason they're all going to die, let's just put it that way. I wanted to get back because uh, I, you know, well, I gave you Alistair's in my assessment that it is going to go nuclear, that uh, Israel is going to use a nuke on Iran. And I do believe that the United States is going to bomb Iran. Now, I want you to refer back to a previous video when I was telling you that Iran said if the uh, U.S. or if the planes fly out of Qatar or Saudi Arabia or the United Arab Emirates, I think we got some base planes there. Uh, that uh, even if they're nuked, they said they're going to bomb those uh, those countries, at least those bases for sure, and uh, they might end up destroying some of that uh, oil infrastructure. Now, what I wanted to point out, okay, let's say we do accomplish cutting off uh, the oil going to China. Okay, so China's going to be in the hurt locker. Well, guess what? You know, you're biting off the hand that feeds you. We're going to be in the hurt locker too. If there's no oil coming out of the Middle East, what do you think is going to happen to the price of oil? I mean, you you think inflation's bad now? You're going to be looking at $18 a gallon, at minimum. So I mean, holy shit. So I mean, that's another reason that we're run by lunatics. These warmonger Democrat lunatics. If they really do bomb Iran, which I think they are, I mean, and and if if, if Iran holds to their promise and launches on those nations that the planes came out of. Talk about World War III, baby. World War III, holy shit. That would be unbelievable. All right, getting back to commodities for just one second. I don't know if you follow along. Gold uh, hit another record high. And uh, right now, silver, it's still hovering between 28 and 29. So, I mean, if you can pick up some, the best deal that I can find right now is that one kilo uh, Australian uh, silver coin available at SD Bullion uh, for $1.49 over spot. Or you can pick up some Buffalo Rounds, they're one ounce uh, .99 silver coins for uh, I think it's a dollar. 
a 99 cent of a spot or something like that uh, for you know per ounce so uh, so right now I mean the only thing if I had any money I and of course I'm broke you know like it's like I've told you the story about um, my wife's name on the loan and I had to borrow the money and then they wanted the interest up front so I'm completely wiped out I can't buy anything but if I could I'd continue to stock up on silver just saying I wanted to talk about the uh, the conversation between Elon Musk and Trump for just a minute uh, you know it's just just my thoughts on that uh, the first thing was it was a conversation which I like that format a lot better than you know just somebody just putting you on the spot and they're especially when Trump goes into the mainstream media and they're just they're like attack dogs man they you know they always set him up with the question why are you such a racist uh, racist Donald Trump can you answer that question? You know, I mean, just the loaded questions like that, and you're just like looking at it like, where in the hell do they come up with these questions, you know? They're trying to, obviously, they're trying to set him up, you know? Uh, and, of course, he has to respond to that. So I, that was the first thing I wanted to talk about was it was a conversation, which I really enjoyed it. I hope you listened to it. I think like a billion people have watched it now. Uh, but I did, I don't know if you ever give any feedback to the Trump team, you know? There's the Trump team on X. Sorry, the, I have to keep adjusting the camera it's sliding around on me uh, if you ever talk to the Trump team one of the things that I don't like about Trump is he just he kept rambling on about the same talking points you know it, no matter where the conversation went in the in the com, you know in in the conversation and I wanted him to bring up some new things so let me let me give you an example because I was I was hitting Elon because the question went out what what should I ask Trump I want to ask why in the next administration is he going to put that little dirt bag that killed 10 million people Fachi in jail? I'd like to somebody to ask Trump that question. You know, or does he regret listening to that little freaking troll that, you know, that killed 10 million people and is still not in jail? I want to know, man. I want somebody to ask Trump that question. Or better yet, you know, let's say that, you know, how do you feel about the way COVID was handled by uh, Donald Trump? You know, uh, you know, with the lockdowns and everything. Now we know a lot of the Republican states, like South Dakota, Florida, for the most part, did not follow your uh, CDC guidelines and uh, pretty much ended the lockdowns pretty quickly. I mean, even here in Florida, the kids in school were wearing masks far longer than than they should have been, breathing in all that bacteria. I imagine a lot of them got sick for no damn reason. But ask Trump that question. Somebody ask him that question. I want to know, man. I want to know if he's learned anything, and then in the next administration, he's going to do something different. Okay, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, obviously I'm voting for Trump, but what I'm saying is I want to make sure that he's going to be on the right side. Or what is he, or ask the question, okay, you say you're going to end the war in Ukraine. How are you going to do that? I, you know, I think he gave a plan that he was going to tell Putin, well, we're just going to nuke you unless you stop. Well, guess what? Russia's going to say, okay. Let's, let's do it, big boy. Let's end the world. Because they're not backing down at this point. So what he's got to, at least he'll have a conversation, I think, with Putin, which is good. And that, that'd be a question I want to ask. Are you going to have a conversation with Putin as soon as you get in office? I wanted to talk one more thing. This is on a personal note. Because I, I've harped on this in previous videos. And I, I wanted to just talk about how life is a progression. And I'll just give you one quick story. I know this is going to bore you. If you want to cut off right here, I don't blame you. But, you know, one of the things before I got divorced was my wife would go out and she cleaned the birdcage. Okay, and then, of course, I have to clean the gutters about once a month. So then I would go up and clean the gutters and that would, that would get the birdcage all dirty. And she'd get pissed off. Well, you got my birdcage all dirty. I just cleaned it. What the hell's wrong with you? I said, well, the gutters got to get cleaned out. You know that the, if I clean the gutters, it's going to get the birdcage dirty, right? So, I mean, what do you want me to say? And uh, so the progression that I wanted to, to hit you with, no matter what your project is, is think about the project. So recently, of course, I had to clean the gutters. So what happens when I clean the gutters? All the leaves go down into the bushes. So now I got to trim. So let's get back to how life is a progression. Okay. So... Let's just take my example, I and I want you to do this with any project you have around the house. All right, so if I'm gonna trim the bushes, 
it doesn't make sense to trim the bushes unless I go up and clean out the gutters. Because what's going to happen when I clean out the gutters? All the leaves from the gutters are going to go into the bushes. And so that would make me twice as much work if I you know, did the bushes, then cleaned the gutters, and then went back and blew out the bushes. You see what I'm saying? And then if you if trim the bushes, you know, my bushes are in rock, then I got to blow out the rock. So, the, and you, so if I went up, if I did the bushes first, blew out the rock, went up, cleaned the gutters, then I'd have to come back down, blow out the rock again. All right, so anyway, i just given this as an example of a project uh, that I had just had recently. You know, the same thing could be said for working on your car. All right, if you wash your car, you know, it's a progression. That's a good time to wax it. That makes sense, right? I mean, you, you're not going to wax a dirty car. There's a progression for you. So I just wanted to end on that note. You guys, peace out. Stay free. Got to walk the dog the rest of the way. Let's get one more look at him. Here he is right here. There he is. Does he look tired? I think I beat him up pretty good today. <laughs> My ex-wife thinks I'm going to kill him by getting him out here in this heat. Oh, by the way, that was another thing. I'm going to have to get out the winter coat. It's supposed to be 90 degrees on Friday. I I'll have to put my winter coat on and, uh, and my galoshes because uh, 90 degrees here, whoo, that's like cold weather.